The Garuda Linux installer needs 7-zip. So the first thing we're gonna do is download that. For whatever reason, they didn't use just like a regular zip file, they used a 7-zip. Once you have it installed, we're gonna to go to the page where you can download the Garuda downloader. It's kind of an automated way to download the ISO and mount it onto a, a USB stick all in one shot which is kind of convenient and I'll put links in the description to 7-Zip and the Garuda downloader. So you'll see now that I'm... Here's another annoying thing. I have to actually configure Windows to use 7-Zip to open the 7-Zip files. I don't know why I didn't figure that out automatically. I'm not too familiar with it. I don't know if that's normal or just a glitch I was having. Anyway, once we got the archive open, we're going to extract it. You'll see it's in the Garuda download folder. We'll scroll down and it's uh, it's a self-contained program. It's not gonna install. I mean, you only need to run it once, so there's no sense in that. You'll see that we've selected Dragonized Edition. Click download. And it's going to just start to download the ISO for Garuda Dragonized. We don't need to see the entire progress, so I have edited the video to cut right to the end of it. Should take you, I don't know, my internet connection is 500 megabits. Took you know, 10 minutes to download it. Once you're done, you click Launch Rufus. And you're going to open up Rufus, which is the program for mounting the ISO onto a USB drive. The, dr the drive I'm using is 4 gigabytes. That's plenty. You know, just double check your settings. Once it looks good, click start. It's gonna give you the warning that it erases the whole USB disk. Make sure you use a blank one or one that doesn't have stuff on it you need that you can clear away. Again, we're just gonna fast forward right to the end of the, of the mounting. And once that's done, you can, you can go ahead and click close. Make sure that your your computer is set to boot to USB in the BIOS or that you know how to get to the boot menu to tell it for that one time to boot to USB. I'm gonna go ahead and restart Windows. Now I've already partitioned the disk. This tutorial is going to be for if you've already made a, a blank space in your disk to have this. There is a way to resize a partition from the installer but we're not going into that in this tutorial we're going to assume you already have an unpartitioned section of your hard drive or solid state drive you know the when it does the countdown the default selection for the usb stick is going to work like a lot of linux distros this is also a live usb boot disk it's going to take you right to a, you know, Garuda desktop running on memory right off of the USB stick. You can also use this just as like a live Linux when you don't need to install the whole operating system and you just need to do something in Linux one off. And another one of my favorite things in Linux in general is it tells you what it's doing when it boots up. Unlike Windows, it just leaves you with a spinning circle and doesn't show you anything. Not that I'm like some purist or elitist. I use Windows all the time as my main work computer, but because I use Linux a lot too, always comparing. And when I say use Linux a lot, I mean recently because I've gotten back into it because I used to do Linux stuff as a job all from command line. Didn't use it for many years. Now I'm getting back into it just because Garuda looks so cool. When you get back to the desktop, you're going to see that you've got the Garuda welcome screen open that tells you what it shows you options for what apps that you've got. If you click the bar in the bottom of that window that says install Garuda, which in this case is what we're doing since we're not using the live features. You can't see it because the lighting is bad when I aimed my camera at the screen, but it says that there's a problem because it's not connected to the internet. So you're going to want to go to the upper right corner 
where the Wi-Fi logo is and just have it connect to a Wi-Fi network. You can't just click the name of the network. You have to click that little connect button to the right of it and type in your password and press enter. So you're going to select the second option for replace a partition and you'll see on that right side of that partition table I already have a blank space. It's going to tell you the current and then what it'll look like after. You click next. You're going to set your basic user info. You know, like a lot of distributions, this doesn't just have you set a root password and go in as root. You go in as a regular user and you can sudo yourself to elevate your privileges. It'll automatically give you sudo access. And then you're going to look at your time zone and keyboard and partitions and double check your settings. I also like that it has you select the time zone when you install it because by default, Windows just puts you on America West Coast time no matter what. Just because that's where Microsoft is and that's where Windows is made. On this installer, it actually asks you what your time zone is so that it can set your clock accordingly to begin with. And, you know, this installer might take different amounts of time depending on your hardware power. I just edited the video to cut right to the end. It said it's at 94% already. It's really not that fast. I just didn't need to make you sit there and watch the loading bar. In my case, I have an 8th generation i5 on this computer. I tried Garuda on a 4th generation i5 Intel processor, and it was... And a little slow. I mean, the graphical interface does use a fair amount of resources, but that's the trade-off. The desktop in Garuda makes Arch Linux very usable, but at the cost of system resources. So we're going to click that checkbox to restart now. We're done. When it goes through for reboot, what's going to happen is this, of course, puts the Grub bootloader in and it replaces the Windows bootloader with Grub. And then it also sets Garuda as the default operating system. And you can change that in the Grub settings later if you need to use Windows as the default OS. And right there, what you saw in Grub, if I had hit the down arrow on the keyboard twice, it would go down to select Windows manually to boot to. And now we're at the login screen. Login screen looks beautiful. Everything in this operating system looks so good. There's lots of Linux, but when I say this one was attractive, I mean that in a shallow way, purely on looks. And it's going to ask us again for the Wi-Fi password. So just go ahead and put that in. But it won't again after this. We're connected to the Wi-Fi now, so we're good. And it loads up console to begin with, and it asks you for your sudo password. That's the first thing that comes up after you get it going. And it's going to immediately start checking for package updates, which is pretty smart. You're going to get a little bit of fast forwarding through this because you don't need to see it just go through the whole entire list of things. You get the point. So once it's got the packages it wants to update, it's gonna prompt you to install, you can hit yes. And once it's finished, you just press enter to exit and it will close the console. So it's going to ask you for some other preferences after the updates, like if you need printer, scanner, and Samba support, like if you're on a LAN 
and need to do sharing. It's going to ask if you want to install additional wallpapers and if you want pen testing software. In my case, I don't need any of that. And that's about it. I appreciate you watching the video. I'm just getting this channel off the ground. I'm so interested in Garuda that I want to dive into it and I want to make videos. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll see me going through a journey of really familiarizing myself with this and diving deeper and deeper into it as I go along. It's been a while since I've really been into Linux. I used to run web FTP, email, you know, web hosting kind of servers all from command line. And I have minimal exposure to desktop operating systems, but this one just looks like it really is worth some investigation. And if you want to subscribe, if you want to comment, you want to throw in your ideas about it, ideas for future videos, that's cool too. And you can, we can go on this journey together. I think there's a little bit of content about this operating system on YouTube, but there needs to be more, and I want to really contribute. So I appreciate your participation as I build a community for this. Other than that, we're done with the video. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.